So today we get to start our next new chapter book for our chapter book story time. Um, we're going to read Homer Price, which is a book that was written by Robert McCloskey. He is a main author. And this particular book was um, first published in 1943. It has uh, six different sections or chapters. They look like they're each individual stories in that. So for each day, I'm going to go ahead and read one of the stories. The first one is called The Case of the Sensational Scent. Okay, so <clears throat> here is a picture that it's starting off with. I'll get you started there. It looks like we're looking at Shady Rest Tourists Camp. It has running water. Back then in the 40s, that was a big selling point. <laughs> and here comes Homer Price. The Case of the Sensational Scent. About two miles outside of Centerburg, where Route 56 meets Route 56A, there lives a boy named Homer. Homer's father owns a tourist camp. Homer's mother cooks fried chicken and hamburgers in the lunchroom and takes care of the tourist cabins while his father takes care of the filling station, like a gas station, right? Homer does odd jobs about the place. Sometimes he washes windshields of cars to help his father, and sometimes he sweeps out cabins or takes care of the lunchroom to help his mother. When Homer isn't going to school or doing odd jobs or playing with other boys, he works on his hobby, which is building radios. He has a workshop in one corner of his room where he works in the evenings. Before going to bed at night, he usually goes down to the kitchen to have a glass of milk and cookies because working on radios makes him hungry. Tabby, the family cat, usually comes around for something to eat too. One night, Homer came down and opened the icebox door and poured a saucer of milk for Tabby and a glass of milk for himself. He put the, battle, the bottle back and looked to see if there was anything interesting on the other shelves. He heard footsteps and felt something soft brush his leg, so he reached down to pet Tabby. When he looked down, the animal drinking the milk certainly wasn't a cat. It was a skunk. Homer was startled just a little, but he didn't make any sudden motions because he remembered what he had read about skunks. They can make a very strong smell that people and other animals don't like. But the smell is only for protection, and if you don't frighten them or hurt them, they're very friendly. While the skunk finished drinking the saucer of milk, Homer decided to keep it for a pet because he had read somewhere that skunks become excellent pets if you treat them kindly. He decided to name the skunk Aroma. Then he poured out some more milk for Aroma and he had some for himself. Aroma finished the second saucer of milk, licked his mouth and calmly started to walk away. Homer followed and found that Aroma's home was under the house right beneath his window. During the next few days, Homer did a lot of thinking about what would be the best way to tame Aroma. He didn't know what his mother would think of a pet skunk around her house, but he said to himself, Aroma has been living under the house all this time and nobody knew about it. So I guess it will be all right for it to keep on being a secret. He took a saucer of milk out to Aroma every evening when nobody was looking. And in a few weeks, Aroma was just as tame as a puppy. Homer thought it would feel nice if he could bring Aroma up to his room because it would be good to have company while he began or but while he was building radios. So he got an old basket and tied a rope to the handle to make an elevator. He let the basket down from his window and trained Aroma to climb in when he gave a low whistle. Then he would pull the rope and up came the basket and up came Aroma to pay a social call. Aroma spent most of his visit sleeping while Homer worked on a new radio. Aroma's favorite place to sleep was in Homer's suitcase. Let's see the picture here. Here's Homer working on a radio. Can you guys find this the skunk Aroma in his suitcase? Right. One evening Homer said, there that's the last wire soldered and my new radio is finished. I'll put the new tubes in it and then we can try it out. Aroma opened one eye and didn't look interested, even when the radio worked perfectly and an announcer's voice said, N.W. Blot of Centerburg won the grand prize of $2,000 for writing the best slogan about Greg's aftershaving, aftershaving lotion. 
Why, I know him, and he's from my town, said Homer. Aromo still looked uninterested while the announcer said that next week they would broadcast the Dregs program from Centerburg, and that Mr. Dregs himself would give Mr. N.W. Blot the $2,000 cash and one dozen bottles of Dregs lotion for thinking up the best advertising slogan. Just think, Aroma, a real radio broadcast from Centerburg. I'll have to see that. The day of the broadcast arrived and Homer rode to Centerburg on his bicycle to watch. He was there early and he got a good place right next to the man who worked the controls so that he could see everything that happened. Mr. Dregs made a speech about the wonderful thing Mr. N.W. Blot had contributed to the future of American shaving um, with his winning slogan. The aftershave lotion with the dis distinctive invigorating smell that keeps you on your toes. <laughs> then he gave N.W. the 2,000 and one dozen bottles of lotion in a suitcase, just like the one that Homer had at home. After N.W. made a short speech, the program was over. Just then, four men said, put them up. And then one of them said to N.W., if you please, and grab the suitcase with all of the money. <gasps> Look at this. These robbers are here with their covered faces. And they've got pistols. Oh dear. <clears throat> so they grabbed the suitcase with all the money and lotion inside it. Everyone was surprised. Mr. Dregs was surprised. N.W. Blot was surprised. The announcer was surprised. The radio control man was surprised. And everybody was frightened, too. The robbers were gone before anybody knew what happened. They jumped into a car and were out of sight down Route 56A before the sheriff shouted, Wait till I send out an alarm, men, and then we'll chase them. No Rovio raiders, I mean radio robbers, can do that in this town and get away again. The sheriff sent out an alarm to the state police, and then some of the men took their shotguns and went off down 56A in the sheriff's car. Homer waited around until the sheriff and the men came back, and the sheriff said, They got clean away. There's not hide or hair of them the whole length of 56 or 56A. While they were eating dinner that evening, Homer told the family about what happened in town. After helping with the dishes, he went up to his room, and after that, he had, oh, after he had pulled Aroma up in the basket, he listened to the news report of the robbery on his new radio. The police are baffled, the news commentator said. Mr. N.W. Blot is offering half the prize money and six bottles of the lotion to anyone who helps him get his prize back. Aroma, if we could just catch those robbers, we would have enough money to build lots of radios and even a tele television receiver, said Homer. He decided that he'd better go to bed instead of trying to think of a way to catch robbers because he was going to get up very early the next morning and go fishing. He woke up before it was light, slipped on his pants and ate a bowl of cereal. Then he found his fishing pole, gave a low whistle for Aroma. The whistle wasn't necessary because Aroma was waiting in the basket. Homer put the basket on his bike and they rode off down 56A. They turned into the woods that were where the bridge crossed the brook and Homer parked the bike and started to walk along the brook with Aroma following right along. They fished all morning but didn't catch anything because the fish just weren't biting. They tried all the best places in the brook and when they were ready to go home, they decided to go straight through the woods instead of following the brook because the woods path was much shorter. The path through the woods was an old wood road that was not used anymore. It had not been used for years and almost everybody had forgotten that it was ever built. Before they had gone very far, Homer thought he heard voices and then he smelled bacon cooking. He thought it was a strange, he thought it was strange because nobody ever came up on this mountain to camp. So he decided to sneak up and investigate. When Homer and Aroma looked around a large rock, they saw four men, the robbers whispered Homer, and indeed, they were the robbers. There was the suitcase with the $2,000 and the one dozen bottles of aftershaving lotion lying open on the ground. The robbers had evidently just gotten up because they were cooking breakfast over an open fire, and their faces were covered with soapy lather, for they were shaving. Homer was so interested in what the robbers were doing that he forgot to keep one eye on Aroma. The next thing he knew, Aroma had left the hiding place and was walking straight toward the suitcase. He climbed inside and curled up 
on the packages of money and went right to sleep. The robbers were busy shaving and having a difficult time of it too, because they only had a little one little mirror and they were all stooped over trying to look at it. <laughs> this picture of these robbers. You see the mirror that they're trying to use <laughs> for their shaving while they were out outside. I can hardly wait to finish shaving and try some of that fragrant after shaving lotion, said the first robber. Then the second robber, who had a cramp in his back from stooping over and from sleeping in the woods, straightened up and turned around. He noticed Aroma and said, look at that thing in our money. The other robbers turned around and looked surprised. That, my dear friend, is not a thing. It's a mustaline mammal, genus Mephitis, Mephitis, commonly known as a skunk, said the third robber, who had evidently gone to college and studied zoology. Well, I don't care if it's a thing or a mammal or a skunk. He can't sleep in our money. I'll cook that mammal's goose. Then he picked up a big gun and pointed it at Aroma. I wouldn't do that if I were you, said the third robber with the college education. It might attract the sheriff. And besides, it isn't the accepted thing to do to those mammals. So the robbers put a piece of bacon on the end of a stick and tried to coax Aroma out of the suitcase. But Aroma just sniffed at the bacon, yawned, and went back to sleep. Now the fourth robber picked up a rock and said, this will scare it away. The rock went sailing through the air and landed with an alarming crash. It missed Aroma, but it broke a half dozen bottles of Mr. Dreg's lotion. The air was filled with that distinctive invigorating smell that keeps you on your toes, but mostly, the air was filled with aroma. Ooh. What do we see? All these broken bottles and the skunk with his tail straight up. Everybody ran because the smell was so strong it made you want to close your eyes. Homer waited by the old oak tree for aroma to catch up, but not for aroma to catch up all the way. They came to the bike and rode off at full speed except to stop once to put Aroma and the basket on the rear mudguard, and that made, and they made the trip home in record time. Homer was very thoughtful while he did the odd jobs that afternoon. He thought he'd better tell his mother what had happened up on the mountain. His father had gone into the city to buy some things that were needed around the place, and he would not be back until later that night. Excuse me. At dinner time, he was just about to tell her when she said, I think I smell a skunk around here. I'll tell your father when he gets home. We'll have to get rid of that animal right away because people will not want to spend the night at our tourist camp if we have that smell around. Then Homer decided not to say anything about it because he didn't want his father to get rid of Aroma and because the robbers would no doubt get caught by the state police anyway. That evening, Homer was taking care of the gas station and helping his mother while his father was in the city. In between cooking hamburgers and putting gas in cars, he read the Radio Builders magazine and looked at the pictures in the mail order catalog. About eight o'clock, four men got out of a car and said, we would like to rent a tourist cabin for the night. Homer said, all right, follow me. And he led the way to one of the larger cabins. I think you'll be comfortable here, he said, and that will be $4 in advance, please. Here's a $5 bill, buddy. You can keep the change, said one of the men. Thanks, said Homer, as he stuffed the bill in his pocket and hurried out the door because there was a car outside honking for gas. He was just about to put the $5 bill in the cash register when he smelled that strange mixture, partly the distinctive invigorating smell that keeps you on your toes and partly aroma. He sniffed the bill and sure enough, that was what he had smelled. The robbers, those four men are the robbers, said Homer to himself. He decided that he had better call up the sheriff and tell him everything. He knew that the sheriff would be down at the barber shop in Centerburg, playing checkers and talking politics with his friends, this being Saturday night. He waited until his mother was busy getting an extra blanket for someone because he did not think it was necessary to frighten her. Then he called the barber shop and asked to talk to the sheriff. Hello, said Homer to the sheriff. Those four robbers are spending the night out here at our tourist camp. Why don't you come out and arrest them? Well, I'll be switched, said the sheriff. Have they got the money and the lotion with them? Yes, they brought it, said Homer. Well, have they got their guns along too, asked the sheriff. I don't know, but if you hold on the line a minute, I'll slip out and look, said Homer. He slipped out and peer, peeped through the window of the robber's cabin. 
They were getting undressed and their guns were lying on the table and on the chairs and under the bed and on the dresser. There were lots of guns. Homer slipped back and told the sheriff, they must have a dozen or two. The sheriff said, they have, huh? Well, I'll tell you, Sonny, I'm just about to get my hair cut, so you just sort of keep your eye on them, and I'll be out there in about an hour or so. That'll give them time to get to sleep. Then some of the boys and me can walk right in and snap the bracelets on them. Ooh, what do you think he meant by bracelets? You know, put them in handcuffs? Okay, see you later, Sheriff, said Homer. <laughs> later, when his mother came in, Homer said, Mother, I have some very important business. Do you think that you could take care of things for a while? Well, I think so, Homer, said his mother, but don't stay away too long. Homer slipped up to a window of the robber's cabin and started keeping an eye on them. They were just getting into bed, and they were not in a very good humor because they had been arguing about how to divide the money and the six bundles of lotion that were left. They were afraid, too, that one of the four might get up in the night and run away with the suitcase, with the money and the lotion in it. They finally decided to sleep all four in one bed because if one of them got out of the bed, it would surely wake the others up. It was a tight fit, but they all managed to get into bed and get themselves covered up. Here's a picture of the robbers here. All trying to sleep in the same bed. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, okay. They put the suitcase and the money and the money with the lotion right inside, inside right in the middle of the bed. And after they had turned out the light, it was very quiet for a long while. And the first robber said, you know, this ain't so comfortable sleeping four in a bed. I know the second robber said, but it's better than sleeping in the woods where there are mosquitoes. And funny little animals that don't smell so nice, added the third robber. You must admit, though, that our present condition could be described as being a trifle overcrowded, said the one with the college education. Them is my feelings exactly, said the first robber. We might as well start driving to Mexico because we can't sleep like this. We might as well ride toward the border. No, driving at night makes me nervous, said the second robber. Me too, said the third. Then there followed a long argument, with the first and the third robbers trying to convince the second and fourth robbers that they should go to Mexico right away. While they were arguing, Homer thought very hard. He guessed that something had better be done pretty quick, or the robbers might decide to go before the sheriff got his hair cut. He thought of a plan, and without making a sound, he slipped away from the window and hurried to Aroma's hole under the house. He whis whistled softly, and Aroma came out and climbed into the basket. Aroma had calmed down considerably, but she still smelled pretty strong. Homer quietly carried the basket to the spot under the robber's window and listened. They were still arguing about the trip to Mexico. They didn't notice Homer as he put the basket through the window onto the chair beside the bed. Of course, Aroma immediately crawled out on the bed and took her place on the suitcase. Stop tickling, said the tall robber, because his feet stuck out and Roma's tail was resting on his toes. I'm not tickling you, said the second robber, but I say, I think I still smell that animal. Now that you mention it, I seem to smell it too, said the third robber. The fourth robber reached for the light button, saying, that settles it. Let's get dressed and go to Mexico, because I think I smell that animal too. Then, as the robber turned on the light, Homer shouted, you do smell that animal, and please don't make any sudden moves, because he excites easily. The robbers took one look and pulled the covers over their heads. The sheriff will be here in minutes, said Homer bravely. But five minutes later, the sheriff had not shown up. The robbers were getting restless and Aroma was tapping her foot and getting excited. Homer began to be disturbed about whether his, what his mother would say if Aroma smelled up one of her largest and best tourist cabins. So he quickly thought of a plan. He climbed through the window. He gathered up all the guns and put them in the basket. Then he gathered up the robber's clothes and tossed them out the window. After picking out one of the larger guns, Homer waved it in the direction of the robbers and said, you may come out from under the covers now and hold up your hands. The robbers gingerly lifted the covers and peeked out. Then they carefully climbed out of bed so as not to disturb Aroma and put up their hands. We didn't mean to do it, mumbled the first robber, and we'll give the money back, said the second robber. Our early in Early environment is responsible for our actions, said the educated robber. 
I'm sorry, Homer said, but I have to take you to the sheriff. He motioned with the gun and demanded that the fourth robber pick up the suitcase with the prize money and the lotion inside. Then he said, forward, march. Must we go in our pajamas, cried one, and without our shoes, wailed another. Aroma's getting excited, Homer reminded them, and the robbers started marching without any more arguing, but they did grumble and groan about walking on gravel with bare feet. Robbers aren't accustomed to walking without shoes, and they couldn't have run away even if Homer and Aroma hadn't been there to guard them. First came the first robber with his hands up, then the second robber with his hands up, then the third robber with his hands up, and then the fourth robber with his right hand up and his left hand down, carrying the suitcase. Of course, Aroma, Aroma followed the suitcase. And last of all came Homer, carrying the basket with a dozen or two guns in it. He marched them straight down Route 56A and up the main street of Centerburg. They turned into the barbershop where the sheriff was getting his hair cut and the boys were sitting around playing checkers. When the sheriff saw them come in, and come in the door, he stopped talking about his about the World Series and said, well, I'll be switched off if it ain't the radio, the Rovio Raiders, I mean, the radio robbers. The sheriff got out of the barber chair with his hair cut up on one side and not cut up the other and put handcuffs on the men and led them off to the jail. <laughs> well, there isn't much more to tell. The newspapers told the story and had headlines saying, boy and pet skunk trap shaving lotion robbers by smell. And the news commentators on the radio told about it too. Homer's father and mother said that Homer could keep Aroma for a pet because instead of hurting business, Aroma has doubled business. People from miles around are coming to the crossroads where 56 meets 56A just to buy gasoline and to eat a hamburger or a home-cooked dinner and to see Aroma. The next time Homer went to Centerburg to get a haircut, he talked the whole thing over again with the sheriff. Yep, said the sheriff, that was sure one smell job of swelling. I mean, one swell job of smelling. <laughs> he got a little mixed up, huh? Here are the robbers and their parade marching down the street, heading over to the barber shop to meet the sheriff. <laughs> a silly story. All right, next time we're going to read chapter two, which is the case of the cosmic comic. All right. Well, enjoy your night, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.